So in the last part we left off being able to upload profile pictures, so in this part we're going to let people send posts with images in them now. And we're just going to delete that debugging stuff from the last one. So here when we post something we're going to have the option to post a picture. So we have our upload image from the profile page and it looks very generic so we could actually copy and paste that into its own class and we could reuse it because we need to reuse it for our profile page anyway. So if we create a new class, we'll call it image.php and we'll copy and paste all of this, even the query, we'll cut that and we'll replace it with image upload. We'll call it image upload image actually. So here we have image upload image. So in here what we'll do is we'll go to image and we'll create a class. And this class is going to have one method so far called public static function upload image and we'll just paste in our code. So our query we obviously want to be different depending on what we're updating. So we're going to copy that and we're just going to say query params and then up here we're going to pass the query and the parameters to the function. So back on my account we're just going to pass in this query and the parameters and then what we're going to do is we're going to go to our profile page and we're going to create a simple form to upload image posts. So if we go to our my account page we can copy that form, we go to our profile page and we can just paste it down here. So what we're going to do is say upload an image, get rid of that post button and paste it in here and we'll change the form action to profile and here we'll cut that text area too. So we're going to completely replace the old form with this new one and we'll delete the old form. So what we'll do is we'll refresh and we'll actually just put in like a break tag and there it says we can add an image to our post. So what we want to do is check if somebody's tried to actually upload an image and if we go up here to when we create a post we can say if files and the file we want to look for is not profile image we want to call it something like post image. So if files post image size equals zero that means that the user hasn't tried to upload a file and we just want to run everything normally. Otherwise we'll echo image. So we'll try and run this and see what happens. So we just put in any random post and so we click post. It works fine. If I put in an image now it says image. So here in the else part is where we want to run the image upload. So here we'll say post create image post and we'll pass it the is logged in the user ID just like before. And what we'll do is we'll go to post and we'll create this new function and it's really similar to create post so we'll copy and paste that and paste it below. We'll say create image post. Since we're uploading an image we might not always have a caption so we could remove that second check so it could be zero. We don't want to force the user to have a caption if they don't want one. And then we insert the post and then what we want to do is get the ID of the last post the user inserted so we'll do another query. So what we'll do is we'll run a query we'll say select ID from posts. We'll click run. And there's all the IDs from posts. And we're logged in as Francis. So we'll say we're user underscore ID equals one. And there we have all of the posts by Francis. And then what we want to do is we want to limit it to one. We'll run that and we get one return, but that's the wrong one. We want to get the most recent post, not the least recent post. So we'll say order by ID descending. And therefore we get the most recent post. So we'll copy and paste that. There's our query. And here we want to change user ID to user ID and then we'll create an array and store the user ID in that. Just like we'd expect and we actually want to change it to logged in user ID. And then what we get returned, we go to the zeroth index and we get the ID column from that. And that is going to be the post ID. And we actually want to just kick that out and change that to else. And take this out as well. So now we have the post ID and we could return post ID if we wanted. Uh, and then on the profile page, after we run create image post, we could store the post ID again in a variable. And then down here, what we could do is we could say image, upload image. And here we pass our query, which is going to be update posts set post image equal to post image, where ID equals post ID. And then here we'll create another array, we'll send the post image, and then we'll send the post ID. So we don't have our post image yet, and back here in our upload image function, we need to change profile image to the name of the form we're uploading from. So we want to make that dynamic, so we'll just change that to form name, and change it to form name down here, and we'll pass in the form name to the query back to our my account page and we want to just update upload image with the form name which in this case is profile image. Then we want to go back to profile page and we want to change this to say post image. 
And because we don't actually have the post image yet, what we want to do is take this array item out because we'll have one item and then inside of the function itself, we'll append on another item before the query runs. So what we need to do is once again, go back to my account and we have our profile image equals profile image once again. And what we want to do is take that out because it won't work anymore. And then we want to go to the image class. And then here, what we want to do before we run the query is we have params and we want to say params is equal to an array. And we're going to paste this array item in here. And here we have profile image. We're going to change that to form name and params is equal to the form name because we're going to prepend on the URL we get from the actual query. And we'll change this to pre params and then we'll say params goes pre params plus params. So we're adding the two arrays together. So this first item will be first. And the reason it has to be first is because if we go to the profile page, for example, you can see that we have this variable here that needs to be substituted and this variable here that needs to be substituted and we have to put them in the right order. So this one has to come first and we don't actually know what the post ID is at the minute. So we're going to prepend it on inside the function. So hopefully that makes sense. And we're going to try and see does this work now. So if we run this, we have a syntax error. We just need to put on another parenthesis. Okay. So the reason we have that error is because you can see we have the else way over here. So what we'll do is we will just remove this one and we have the same problem here. So we'll just remove that one too. So we'll try and run that now. So we have no errors. So we'll try and just put in a random post. We'll click post. It worked fine. We're going to add an image. We're not going to give it any text at the minute. We're going to click post and image hasn't been found. We have another error. And we'll include image. And we just also need to put in a semicolon on this page, a semicolon on here. And down here, we want to change this to upload image. So we got no errors that time. And we're going to check our database. We're going to refresh. And you can see there is the image I just uploaded, but we're not actually displaying it. So we're going to quickly go to the profile page. And when we display posts, which is over here, we're going to display an image if they have one. So what we'll do before the post body is we'll just simply print out P post image. We'll refresh and I can see the image has been printed out, but we want to actually show the image. So what we'll do is we'll say image source equals that. We'll just copy and paste this to save us typing it out again. And the reason we got that is because we're using HTML special charge to make sure the images can't be printed. So what we'll do is we'll copy and paste this prepend it on before HTML special chars has a chance to run and we'll run it now. And now the image has displayed. So we are going to end up with broken images down here, but we're going to fix that in the later part of the series, whenever we're working on the design and we're actually worried about that sort of stuff. So that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. And I'll see you next time.